Hi everyone and welcome back. So the next topic we have uh, in the line is understanding monolith and microservices. This is a really a generic topic and you might already aware what it is because uh, you might have already gone through some content. Okay, what is monolith? What is microservices? And you're already aware about all these things. It's all about how we develop things either a monolith way or the microservice way. Obviously there are advantage and disadvantage. When you talk about uh, microservices, yes, they give you the, the freedom that you can build a small service which is totally decoupled, no sharing of database, the architecture is clean and in, you can even assign an individual team to build that service and manage that service. But obviously there are some pros and cons on both these approaches. Uh, this video is going to be a little theoretical. I'm doing everything in the microservices. You can check out uh, my rest of the videos, all the full stack clone apps we are building using microservices. I mean, the, the idea of microservices is only to isolate and decouple the, the services so that when something go, something went wrong, it's not the whole system went down. Earlier, we used to have a two-tier architecture in most of the applications. There is a front end, there is a, all the APIs are in the single backend framework either you write a node.js nest.js this is a user service it is also managing the cart it is also managing the the booking it is also managing the payments and all different stuff are actually stacked in just a one single service a single point of uh, uh, failure it is because there is a single service if anything goes down all the apis of individual services went out right so monolith single service i can deploy this easily right just whatever you change it i should be able to deploy development uh, it's like a single code base and sometimes it's i mean it's a cons there are pros and cons the 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 pros is you can take the advantage of performance because it's a single repository so you know what needs to be done to improve the performance simplified testing because not all your code and your services are scattered or in the distributed environment you have just a one single code base one single set of api so you can do the testing simplified easy to debug okay i can just go to one repository request came here okay request goes there and this is the problem i can easily debug it but when it comes to this uh, scattered distributed uh, totally decoupled architecture it's really tedious because here is the service then there is a, there is another service then there is another service and they might be talking asynchronously through some events and all and if something goes wrong we will start checking the data we will start tracing the the request because request might be coming from the end user outside and the request might be flowing through different services right so it's not easy to debug in the in, even in the real world projects we have to do lots of things the log tracing and lots of concepts came into the picture like uh, we need to have a proper observability of the logs so that we can understand okay this was this was the request where on what all places it went through that is the the way to clearly debug that so disadvantage of monolith is slow development speed okay 20 developers working on same repository scalability you you are not we are not scaling the individual components reliability if there is in any any reliability means if there is an error in one module all went down and barrier in technology adoption here because this is a single monolith i cannot choose 10 different technologies but here i can even choose a different library different database this is using MongoDB and I'm using Mongoose. This is using TypeORM. I'm using uh, MySQL and Postgres. This is using again a Neo4j graph database because this is the, the need of the business to have a graph database for this. And all of these services can be in, this is can be in the Golang, Node.js, Python, Django, all these because it's that at the end they need to expose some interface and they need to handle the events, synchronous or asynchronous events coming to them. Okay. So what are microservices? Now you already understood. Uh, now microservices is the concept which is widely popular and exist at the both the layer. Either you talk about the front end, then people also started talking about micro front end. So this is the micro front end piece, which we is going to deal with the only particular service. Right? Micro front end means a splitting. I mean the concept of micro front end is not new. It uh, introduced with the Webpack Federation module federation that you can uh, launch multiple applications and share the components of multiple applications into 
a one landing page or one application so whatever you are building in different applications can be combined or consolidated in a single application okay so i mean now we are talking about advantages earlier uh, i was reading a thread on the linkedin that uh, amazon prime moved the their services to monolith and saving the 90 percent cost i mean obviously there are advantages and disadvantages if you are doing unnecessary microservices obviously the cost will go high because you will need a cloud infrastructure to deploy you need a like if you are using a serverless and you are using the serverless lambda api gateway s3 all these cloud resources and you have just a couple of services which can be easily written in uh, just a single monolith not a scattered a distributed environment obviously there are advantages and disadvantages and you have to deal with that so microservices uh, agility they promote agile way of working because small teams individual services flexible scaling uh, a microservice can reach to uh, uh, i mean scaling means they are deployed uh, independently like these they can be deployed as a lambda or ec2 instance or a container they can be scaled individually instead of just scaling the whole monolith independently again they can be deployed i can deploy this service I can deploy this and I can deploy this. They are, there is no interdependency. Highly reliable and happier teams, obviously, like uh, you can individual teams are working. They can choose their stack. They can choose their schedule to deploy things in the agile way. Disadvantage is uh, deployment, right? Because if the, some of the concepts which are dependent on three different services, then you need to be dependent on three different teams to deliver that particular feature exponential infrastructure cost that is true in today's world because uh, you need a uh, even proper testing infrastructure for the deployment you need a uh, multiple lambdas uh, i mean if you talk about the serverless stack or a containerized stack you will be using kubernetes to manage them inside a containers or ecs or serverless lambda so obviously it comes with a cost uh, uh, organization overhead if that is not being managed properly then obviously it become overhead debugging challenge i talked about it okay whenever the request is coming it's hard to debug where it is failing okay lack of standardization without a plan different teams they don't have proper standards to follow but if there is a small team let's say five to five uh, developers team building 20 microservices it's the best thing right not all together like uh, in a particular period of time they will be following the standards they will be standardizing the, their repositories they will be using common architecture pattern and the, the clever leadership makes it possible to build the, the massive infrastructure with cost optimization. So there, there are always a pros and cons. I love doing things in the microservices way. It deals because we have done monolith for a long time. Now it's time to build microservices, but you need to uh, check a case, do a case study, think about the cost optimization for the longer run, not just about, okay, for a monthly cost, this is what, because creating a getting rds instance for these three different lambdas or creating getting the three different rds instance for three different containers is more than having just a one rds instance and having multiple databases on it now there are serverless aurora there are multiple options available to deal with that but this is all about okay how you deal with the, the microservices and microservices is just like a single individually deployable piece of code which only deals with its own data uh, it may be dependent on another service but asynchronously it should not be tightly decoupled with other service or it should not be dependent on the data of another service yes it can listen for the events and can act on it that is asynchronous execution of a service like event driven approach event driven microservices where you throw the event and then the, the the listener services are acting on to that and changing the data or the application state so, I mean, there are lots of things I already covered in multiple videos. I can share the playlist where I'm talking about the different architecture pat patterns to even build as microservices. In the microservices also, there are serverless pattern, containerized uh, architecture pattern or API gateway pattern, circuit breaker pattern. All these patterns are there, which you can study and can learn more to become a ninja developer. That is the final objective, right? Uh, how to become a ninja developer how you can uh, put your thoughts in the architecture discussion or uh, technical discussions okay that's it guys uh, in the next video we will explore more about the architecture